Welcome everybody. My name is Andisa Oludare and I'm Lindy Bechomo and we are Kalami Royal. Today we're going to be talking about waiting well, a subject that Andy and I are both very passionate about. We are joined by Pastor Ali and Dr. Mengot. Welcome. Thank, Thank you for you. gracing us with your presence. Thank, Thank you. you for having us. A uh, pleasure. Me. I'm particularly <laughs> happy and uh, for viewers and audiences you are welcome. A pleasure to be here and definitely praying that the Lord will bless our conversation together. Amen. Pastor Ali, I'm reminded of a time when I was waiting on the Lord for marriage. Um, however, the way it all started was that I was not in the Lord. And um, the, it, it was the first experience where I felt like scripture jumped out of the Bible at me. It felt directed at me. It was the very first time. And um, from that and from that moment on, you know, then I, I started getting serious about the Lord. And I remember so well, um, it was, the Lord led me to Hosea 2, where it was talking about, you know, she shall run after her lovers and she, will, and she shall not um, overcome them. And it was, and then later on in, later on in, in Hosea 2, it talks about, I will allure her and I will, I will speak tenderly to her. And it was, it was, it was like the Lord was now leading me into this intimate relationship with Him. Yeah. Whereas in the back of my mind, I was waiting for this husband to come along. Yeah. But the Lord was actually drawing me to Himself. Yes. So if you can just take us through how important is it to have a vibrant relationship with the Lord, even before you start thinking about the one. Thank you so much. That's a very interesting one from you. <laughs> And then when you look at that scripture, you know, it, 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 it's possible for you to actually misinterpret it and to take it out of context mm -hmm. because you might be thinking that the scripture is actually talking about the one who is to mm -hmm. come. Mm -hmm. But thank God that you understood that God was actually bringing you into a relationship with him. And that, that is very brilliant. And that's very brilliant. Yeah. I want to let people know and also to let you know that we are created primarily to bring pleasure to God. Mm -hmm. That's, that's our, our first assignment. That's our first purpose. That's the reason why we are alive. Every other thing comes in mm -hmm. to add to that. Mm -hmm. Now, when you are not in relationship with God and you are trying to be in relationship with some other things, mm -hmm. it's just a misfit. Yeah. And there's no way it's going to connect. So it's a good thing that God is bringing you first into a relationship with Him. Yeah. Because it is when you are in relationship with God, that's when you are prepared and you are furnished adequately to be in relationship with other people in such a manner that you can have a productive relationship, mm -hmm. viable relationship, healthy relationship. So it's important that uh, people, singles out there, first of all, have a relationship with God, solid yeah. one, yeah. intimate relationship with God, before having relationship with other people mm -hmm. looking for Mr. Right or Miss yes. Right. Yes. You see, there's no way you're going to have a very healthy relationship with other people mm -hmm. until you, first of all, have a relationship with God. That's why when you see the scripture says, the first commandment is love God mm -hmm. with all of your heart, with all of your soul. Then he said, love your neighbor yeah. as thyself. Mm -hmm. Now, the whole of the context of of, of Relationship with, with, with God or a vibe relationship is based on love. There's no way you can love other people well until you know how to love God well. Mm -hmm. um, so, so Andy and I have very different um, histories in terms of our walk with the Lord. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for, for some people like me, um, they, they have a, a checky past, mm -hmm. a checkered <laughs> past. <laughs> If I may say it that way, um, and then and then someone like my friend, from an, you know from my perspective, mm. was living a really really holy lifestyle. Mm. Um, so you know you can you can have it in you know in a church in a church setting where mm. you know you have a new believer a newcomer into Christ, mm. and the brothers are into her and she gets married like this, mm. and then you have someone who's been serving the Lord diligently for years um, in the church. Um, and, and it looks like their marriage is delayed. Mm. So it brings me to the question then, do, I mean, then I want to ask on behalf of someone who might be feeling like they're in that situation, yeah. is marriage a reward? Mm. Okay. Wow. 
It's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the, the first thing, I think I'll, I'll first of all concur with what uh, Reverend Ali was saying, mm -hmm. very important and very primordial is for us to bear at the back of our minds that uh, primarily God establishes a relationship with us mm -hmm. first. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, God wants to be in communion with yeah. creation yeah. Yeah. and we are part and parcel of the agenda of God in the very transformation of the world. Yeah. And so it's very important for us to realize that if we prioritize mm -hmm. our relationship mm -hmm. with God, uh, from that shall ensure a lot of blessings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm which you might call rewards, <laughs> <laughs> which you might call rewards. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, the level of a reward might come as a result of an effort. But I want to believe that grace is grace. Yes. Grace yes. comes as a result and by virtue of divine intervention. Yes. Mm. Amen. Uh, there are many people who work hard at marriage, mm. <laughs> I'll tell you. Mm. They'll put up everything mm. necessary for mm. them to be seen, mm. for them to be ready. But the Bible says the horse can be prepared for battle, mm. but victory belongs to the Lord. Victory belongs to the Lord. Victory belongs to the Lord. So the, the, the end result of it is really not my making. Yes. And that's why we shouldn't go into the marriage enterprise with you know the mindset of mm. achievement yes. you know among yes. the many things i have to achieve in yes. life yeah. you know i have to have my degree mm. i have to get married i have to have children mm. and if those boxes are not ticked and you're still with jesus it's, an, it's a great blessing yeah. mm. i mm. believe because if you've invited christ in your life you have eternal life mm. then abundant life follows with a lot more mm. blessings mm. so if we have that mindset then as reverend ali said it will be a wonderful journey with the lord mm. you go into it without conditionalities mm -hmm. just open to embrace mm. the grace of god in diverse wow. you know uh, colors and definitely interventions mm. all for his glory mm. and for your blessing <laughs> wow. Um, on the same point, I was just thinking, because it is a struggle that, um, or a misconception that most of us have, even from differing viewpoints, mm -hmm. like Lindy came from someone uh, with a certain past, no. and someone like me, um, who had waited on the Lord before, you know, like uh, being sexually active. Mm. So I'm going to speak from that point, mm. but drive into the same notion of feeling like the, yeah. there's a reward when mm. you get married. Mm. So there is a problem that a lot of ladies, um, I don't know about men, that they, they, they are struggling with, where when you get married, I know I was one of them, because of the way that I, I had waited on the Lord. And I felt that uh, I was a princess before God and I deserved certain things. <laughs> um, so there was a, a very wrong perception so of self-entitlement, if I can put it like yeah. that. Wow. Um, that a lot of ladies that I would like for you, Pastor, also to just touch on it, mm. where they've been at, at the church, like me, serving before God, Everyone else is busy doing their lives, but I'm continuing in the right path, you know, seeking you and serving you and doing all these things that are right. And then, then they believe that um, they, they, they deserve certain things. Even when men come, if they are not in a certain package, oh, you know, um, mm -hmm. therefore it's not, it couldn't possibly be, oh. you know. So and, um, and then they, they grow this bitterness, mm. wow. you know towards people like her who just come to the church and then they get married, they, but you know, all, you, know, you know they are past. <laughs> <laughs> so we're like, okay, how does this work? So I really like you said to please help us out, yeah. help those single la um, ladies out there mm. who, who are developing that sense of resentment yeah. oh. and who feel a sense of entitlement. entitlement. And also those who are married like myself, no. where I felt entitled to certain things because mm -hmm. of the kind of life I had lived before. Mm. 
Wow. That, <laughs> that's a great one. And uh, you, you know, it, it, it applies even to life generally. Uh, we always have, human being. we have a sense of entitlement mm. and we always want to base it on, on, on our efforts, you know. Mm. So to say, oh, I got this because yeah. I worked for it. Yeah. I got this because I'm most qualified mm. and that makes me to be able to get this. Yeah. Uh, the first thing you want to know is that God is sovereign. Mm. The sovereignty of God cannot be questioned. Yes. He does his own things the way he wants. Mm. He does it the time he wants to do yeah. it. Yeah. And he does it for anyone at the right time. Yeah. That is number one. Yeah. Number two is that the way in which we come in to know God, to be adopted into the family of God, mm -hmm. does not necessarily matter. Mm. The fact that you have not uh, had this horrible past Mm -hmm. Let's say, let's use that word. Yes. <laughs> and uh, you got to know God, mm -hmm. and somebody had this horrible past, mm -hmm. and also come to know God. Mm -hmm. At the very entr entering point, mm -hmm. where you come in, you are the same. Mm -hmm. Grace found you, mm -hmm. grace changed you, sure. yes, sir. grace made you, mm -hmm. not because of what you have done in the sure. past, mm -hmm. but because of His grace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, that was exactly where the prodigal son yeah. in Luke chapter 15 yeah. got it wrong. Yes, yes. Both of them were together with the father. Mm. The other one, the elder, was serving, yes. doing everything. Yeah. Yes. And here comes the younger one. Mm -hmm. Are you getting what yeah. I'm saying now? <laughs> Maybe not everything. as pious yeah. as the brother. Yes. But again, he just came one day mm -hmm. and just said, come on, I realize that my father could give me this. Mm. Father, give me what is mine. Mm -hmm. And the father gave unto him. Mm. And he, he took off. He went to go and squandered everything. Mm -hmm. He got involved, messed up the life, everything. Mm -hmm. Now, by the time you realize again how benevolent, how great, yes. how wonderful the father mm -hmm. is, then he came to his senses. That's what the Bible says. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then he said, okay, no, I can't be in this mess. Mm -hmm. When I have a great father, when I have a good father, yes. then he returned. He made his way home. Mm -hmm. When he returned, the father was already mm -hmm. waiting for him. Yes. Now, the father killed a fatted calf yes. to welcome him. Mm. Now, the problem <laughs> ensued. The then the one who has been serving, who has been inside, said, what? I've been here, yeah. mm. obeying everything you are yeah. saying. And now come this one, took everything, went away, spent everything, squandered it. Yeah. Now he's back again. The fatted calf, you are yeah. taking again yeah. to welcome him. Yeah. No, I don't think he deserved this. Yes. I deserve yes. that. Yes. Now, the father said, why are you, are you bitter? All things are yours. Yes. All things are yours. So when we come in to know the Lord, all things belong to us. Oh. Every one of us. Because we are God's Father. The past he has overridden. Mm. The past has gone. Mm. He's not looking at you in the image of your past. Yeah. He's looking at you when you come in. Mm. So the, the sense of entitlement does not come in here. When we come in to know the Lord, all of us are living on the currency of grace. Sure, that's, that's yeah. good. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's it. I'd like to ask something from you. So, when, before I got saved, one of the most important pursuits for me was the pursuit of identity. Mm. I wanted to know who am I wow. so mm. badly. And I noticed that it just kept on changing. Mm. One moment I'm, I think I'm this, then I think I'm that, <laughs> but nothing could quite fit mm. in. Um, I was on that quest, and I do believe that every human being goes on that quest, right? That's true. So, it, it, when I finally was found by God, and then I got the definition of who I am based on who He is, mm. and, um, and finding my rooting in that I'm loved, you know, and how he sees me made it. Mm. The, what I would like for you to, to unpack is, um, I noticed that when you're in marriage, when you're single, it's so important for you to discover your identity mm. before you even get married. So I'd like for you to just unpack for us what this vital role mm. of finding out one's identity mm before marriage, like wow. what role it plays mm -hmm. before marriage and how it, 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 what role it also plays when you are in marriage now? Wow. 
Seeing you are looking at my notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good question. I think uh, I, I was highlighting, you know, uh, preparing this conversation. Uh, the singles have to highlight about three or four eyes. Mm, mm. The first eye is to invite Christ mm -hmm. yeah. into their lives. Mm -hmm. Very important. Mm -hmm. And the second eye is identify your identity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> identify your identity through your purpose. Mm -hmm. So you must identify your purpose. And the key word there is your gift. Mm -hmm. mm. Because your purpose defines who you are. Exactly. It defines also your usefulness. Mm, wow. mm -hmm. Because a lot of people think that they are not useful mm. yeah. and God has embedded our usefulness yeah. one through the Lord Jesus Christ yes. you know the Bible says in Acts chapter 17 28 mm -hmm. in him we live mm -hmm. we move oh, and yeah, we have our, our being, being. Yeah. so our, our all identity our overall identity has been encompassed mm -hmm. in the person of Christ mm -hmm. Jesus mm -hmm. yeah. and it's only in him that you know you know your true person mm, mm. so a lot of people were fighting with us uh self-esteem low self-esteem and really uh their potentials in life mm. the first recommendation let's start the point of departure mm. is you to know christ mm, mm, mm. number two go in pursuit now of your very identity which is your purpose yeah. and i define purpose to be that innate ability that god has placed in you yeah. which makes you unique yeah. 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 oh you are unique you are unique yeah. because if you know your identity you will not envy somebody mm -hmm. yeah. if you know your identity you will not compete with yeah. somebody yeah. Yeah. if you know your identity you will stick to your lane because mm -hmm. that's just what is happening yeah. we're living in a world yeah. full of competition, competition. Mm -hmm. full of envy and covetousness mm -hmm. and by the time i see that happening I understand that that person has not come to terms mm -hmm. with the identity. Mm -hmm. It's a journey. You need okay. to get to know it. Okay. And you must long for it. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't know it, you might get troubled in life. Okay. And you might get distracted sure. in life. So sure. there is a process. Mm -hmm. The first is really for you to stick to the word of God. Mm -hmm. In Christ alone, my mm -hmm. hope is found. Mm -hmm. uh, we, mm -hmm. we, have to, we have to search scripture. We have to start digging scripture yeah. as much as possible. Mm -hmm. If you read the book of James, James is the Proverbs of the New Testament. Mm -hmm. It's a very beautiful book. It's a practical yes. book. Uh, James chapter 1 talks of you looking at yourself through the mirror mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. And the, the mirror of God gives us three key capacity mm -hmm. of the word of God. Yeah. So if you look at yourself through the perfect law, mm -hmm. so when you read the word of God, number one, let me give you the first P. I do a lot of alliteration. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so let me give you the first P. When you read the word of God, the word of God starts perfecting you. Mm -hmm. sure. So you are not perfect yet. Mm -hmm. It's a process. Mm -hmm. So it starts perfecting you. What do we mean? Because the Bible says when you look at the mirror of the perfect law of God, it starts perfecting you. It means what people tell you do not define who you are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. Let me give you the second uh, ability which comes from mm -hmm. zooming into the mirror of the mm -hmm. word of God. Mm -hmm. The word of God does not only perfect you, but the word of God purifies you. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you read... John chapter 15 verse 3 says because of the words that I've spoken to you you've been made pure, pure yeah. yes. so the word of God has a capacity to purify you mm. every time you get into the word of God it totally removes the very inadequacies mm. of your life yes, sure. and some of them are yes, the past mm. that the devil keeps yes. reminding you yeah. that you are not worthy yeah. enough yeah. can't you yeah. believe that your past was not good yeah. the word of God comes yeah. to purify you yes. washes yeah. you yeah. and it makes you again acceptable yeah. Yeah. before god because by your efforts you are not yeah. it's only true mm. the grace of god mm. the mercies of god but let, let me give you the, the last point mm. which again resonates with this for somebody mm. who is looking for identity mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the word of god does not only perfect you mm -hmm. it doesn't only purify you mm -hmm. but it's also that word that gives you purpose. Mm. Mm. You begin to have purpose in mm. life. Mm. And purpose is what defines mm. where we're heading to. Yeah, mm. Every right. one of us here on earth, we have a purpose. Mm. You have a purpose. You mm. have a mission. You have an assignment. You have a mandate. You didn't come to follow somebody. Mm -hmm. sure. 
<laughs> mm -hmm. you, come to, you came to fulfill a mission. Mm -hmm. And so you are totally uh, engulfed in the purpose of God. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 29, 11, 11, I know yeah. the plans I have for you. Mm -hmm. Plants of good and not of evil to give you a hope and a future. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's what starts crafting mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the person that you are becoming. Yes, yes. Yet let's, let's understand this. Mm -hmm. Nobody has arrived here. Yeah. Yeah. We are all a work in progress. Exactly. All of us, exactly. we are just a work in progress. Mm -hmm. We are still in the theological phase called sanctification. Mm -hmm. yes. Oh, somebody is preaching with me. <laughs> <laughs> we are in the phase called sanctification. Yeah. It means God by the Holy Spirit yeah. is still working in, in us, us. Yeah. through yeah. us yeah. to present us yeah. before him. Yeah, that is so good. Sure. Sir. That is so good. I I like how um, when you're saying that, you know, it's part of our identity. It is a the word of God, but that stands as a mirror to yeah. us, I, you, telling us who we are. Yes, we we call this organization Kalami Roya mm -hmm. because we're wow. saying that let not the world define who you are. Excellent but you are who God says you yeah. are. Mm -hmm. So if he's saying you're a royal priesthood, wow. that is who you are. Mm -hmm. So I love that. Um, but I, I just want to ask Pastor Ali to just also have an input on it. Yeah. Because I found that when you're married, because of the nature and dynamics of marriage, mm -hmm. let's say conflicts arise mm -hmm. or even besides conflicts, uh, people like us as women, we tend to want to be affirmed. We look at men and say, tell me who I oh, am. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, you know what That's I mean? True. Even yeah. without a spoken language, mm. sometimes we look and we say, define me. Mm. And if a man says, this is, mm. this is this about you, it sticks, mm. right? Mm. Um, and then in mm. terms of the inevitable offenses that mm. come, mm. someone may say something in the heat of a moment yeah. Yeah. that puts a dent mm. on one's identity mm. since we're such hungering mm. individuals, yeah. or, mm. you know? So I'd like for you to just add on what Dr. has said, mm. how this, therefore it gets, it's so important for one to be rooted in the identity mm. before mm. they even get married so mm. that when they are in there, they're not so easily moved. Oh, that's, that's a good one. Yeah. Thank you, Andy, for, for that question. And I want to actually thank uh, Dr. Julius for that beautiful contribution, yeah. you know, earlier on. You see, we, you, you, you need to know that we are defined not by what people say. Mm -hmm. We are defined by what the scripture says. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Before you got married, you've been fearfully and wonderfully made yes, according to the scripture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's a different thing if you don't know that because there are mm -hmm. people who don't know that because yes. they've not come to Christ yes. and they've not been able to open the scriptures mm. and see what the Bible yeah. describes yes. of death. Yes, your mm. portrait, your picture mm. is actually in there mm. before you even, even before you were born. Mm. Wow. God has been thinking of you. Wow. He made you. Yeah. He knitted you mm. together in your mama's womb. Mm. Yeah. All together. So yes, he knew about you. Mm. Now we are in the world, we are people who wants to be affirmed. Everybody is looking for affirmation. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. And most people, or some people, go into marriage, or some people go into marriage mm -hmm. looking for marriage to affirm them, yes. to define yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. But they are wrong. And that's why you see that a lot of people get into marriage, and what they are, what they are looking for, the reality that they are looking for, they yeah, don't get it yeah. sure. because they've built in some things that they are thinking mm -hmm. they want to get when they get there. Yes. Now, they have not found who they are. Yes. They've not found their purpose, just like yes. Dr. Julio said. Yes. So they are going in there and looking for somebody now to say, this is who you yes. are. Yes. Now, yes. some people get in there. These are unrealistic expectations. Yeah. That's okay. yeah, you get in nice. there. Now, instead of getting that, mm -hmm. you don't get that. And the day you don't get that, then you look at yourself. So, this is how miserable sure. I am. This is how terrible. Because somebody said, you are stupid. You are daft. You don't know anything. Somebody mm. said, you are an idiot. Mm. Then you look at yourself. Oh, so this, I'm an idiot. Mm. <laughs> you yeah. understand what I'm, what I'm trying to say? Yeah. That? And somebody yeah. gets into marriage and says, well, I am not happy here. Mm. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because there are these people who go into marriage, all the other things are, I'm ju I just want to be happy. <laughs> you have to be happy before yeah, you get to marriage. Yes, yes, yes. Are you, are you getting what I'm yes. trying to say now? So, when we get in, yeah, that's not also to, to underscore the role of 
you know, where people just compliment you. Compliment yeah. is something yeah. we should do. Yeah. We should compliment yeah. one another. Yeah. But the compliment that people are giving unto you does not actually define you. Yeah. You know, I had an experience sometimes ago, and I used to tell people about that experience, you know, humorously. One day I was walking on the street of Pretorius, just on a single day, and I left home, and I met apparently two different people who had seen me for a long time. Oh, I said, oh, Pastor, you're looking so, so handsome. You just, you, just, you just maintained your shape. You haven't changed. Oh, I said, really? That's good. Thank you so much. I haven't gone so far. I met another person. And he said, oh, wonderful. It's been a long time. It's like you had to wait this way. Wait, two people on the same day, different the person. same street, with different opinion of who I am. Now, I can leave the first person and I feel good about myself. Yeah, oh, really? I'm doing, I'm doing well. This is nice. Then it's I can meet person. the other person and for the rest of the day be miserable. That's because true. he looks at me and says, oh, you are hiding weight. <laughs> and I begin to think, oh, man. What a miserable person I am. So you are not defined mm. by the opinion of people. Mm. You are defined by the mm. word of God. That's mm. why we have to look into the perfect. I mean, Dr. Julius was saying it again the other time. The, 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 the word of God is the perfect mirror. Yes. You get in there, you get the accurate description yes. wow. of who yeah. you are. That's, that's, good. Good. Oh, that's very good. Yeah. Um, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn a bit um, <laughs> and talk about how a person knows uh, that the person that they have come to meet is the person that the Lord wants them to marry. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of, you know, it depends on what circles you, you are in. Some people say they hear the Lord. Some people say, you know, the Lord confirmed it in, a, you know, in scripture, you know, or a song went on and they just knew that this is, this is their spouse. So how, how do we know? When, when do we know that this is the person that the Lord wants me to journey with into marriage? You know, asking that question, I just thought of Gideon. <laughs> the Gideon priest, because a lot of us are looking for signs. Yes, yes, <laughs> you know, yes, yes. Looking for signs. Yeah. Um, when we meet signs, we might meet wonders also. So <laughs> we have to be careful. Very good question, yes. you know, because the, the, the background to this is mm. just a follow up to what we're discussing mm. now. And I think Pastor Ali really highlighted it so succinctly. Mm. That a point of departure one, if I have to reiterate my eyes, is invite Christ into yes. your life. Mm -hmm. So it's identify your purpose. Mm -hmm. But the ten component is very important, which is invest in yourself. Mm -hmm. And if you invest in yourself, that's the key word there is maturity. Mm -hmm. Because for you to pick up some signals, you have to be mature. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. That's good. You have to be mature. Yes. You, you definitely have to be mature because mm -hmm. what an elderly person appreciates is not what a child will appreciate mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the outcome will determine the content mm -hmm. of each and every person. So what we're talking now is now the trajectory of your maturity. Yeah. You, you have to mature. You, you have to mature into it because time and again, when you come before the Lord, there's something which is most important mm. and is the gift of discernment. Yes, Especially for Christians. Mm. <laughs> yes. okay, if you are not discerning, then you might use other avenues mm -hmm. yeah. to be able to, to know, to mm. know yes. <laughs> which might definitely get yes. you into wrong hands. Yes. Because the, the world will present to us different signals, mm. you know. The, the fact that he's just bought a BMW does not mean mm -hmm. that you understand. The, yeah. the fact, a black BMW for a that black BM, <laughs> A black BMW for that matter. <laughs> so the, the, the fact that he just bought a house mm. is not a signal. Mm. No matter him smiling with you at mm. church, yeah. <laughs> it's not a signal yet. Mm. So the test here is a test of maturity. Sure. And I, I think that's why really within the context of what we're discussing that waiting is necessary yeah. mm -hmm. because sometimes the waiting also is because of maturity mm -hmm. yeah. god wants to build character the simple sure. definition of maturity is character development sure. yeah, yeah. Sure. god god just yeah. wants you because you know the agenda of god is not for evil the mm -hmm. bible says the blessings mm -hmm. of god make it rich and added no sorrow to me proverbs 10 22. Mm -hmm. So God will not want you to get into the hands of somebody mm. who will injure you, mm. will abuse you. Mm -hmm. God wants to give you. Your father, 
you can imagine him walking you down the aisle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he wants to give you yeah. to that very special yes, man. Yes. But he also wants you to be ready. Because you might go also into that relationship and you are not ready. Yeah. Yeah. So the first signal, I believe, one, is for you to be a glue with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay, the Bible says in Galatians 5.16, Galatians 5.16, walk with the Spirit and you will not gratify the yeah. desires of the flesh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. this, this is something, so much to say, mm -hmm. but challenging to practice yeah. sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because we are so much accosted and we are also pressurized by externalities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yes, sir, sir. Yeah. We, we all see the things around. We mm -hmm. want the guy with a degree, mm -hmm. if possible, family defines, mm -hmm. does he have a master's? Mm -hmm. But we'll be looking for a PhD. Mm -hmm. <laughs> are you not considering that also? <laughs> so, so families have their definitions which are externalities. Yeah. Yeah and which competes our very convictions mm. based on the word of God. Yeah. Take, take note, yeah. Yeah. never you allow what is outside mm. overwhelm your inside. Mm -hmm. yeah. If not, you might drown. Mm. The only time when a boat can drown is when the water outside can mm. Yes, sir. So you have to be very careful. Mm -hmm. So you must guard what God has mm -hmm. given you and fearfully do so. Number yes, one, sir. walk with the Spirit. Mm -hmm. So it's a journey. Yes, sir. A leader is not made in a day, a leader mm. is made daily. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's a process. Mm -hmm. Number two, you have to have good acquaintances. Yes. I believe if you are part of a church, which you should be, yes. <laughs> yes, you should be. make sure you confide to your pastor. Yes, yes, yes. Make sure you confide to your pastor. Mm -hmm. I always say, if already there are signals around, don't allow those signals to yes. drown you because yes. we are emotional beings, yes. you know? Yes. By the time we go home, we start playing some music and we get carried. Yeah. <laughs> so let, let the pastor help you because he can bring some facts around your space. Yeah. So pastor is there, mama, pastor is there, they'll be able to guide you. Yeah. So each step of the way, everything I'm defining, it's into maturity. Yeah. And I believe the more mature you are, which none of us has arrived, yeah. will arrive there yet, yeah. but the more mature you are, I believe the pastor will definitely give you a signal mm -hmm. that, oh, I knew you when you mm -hmm. came here, but now mm -hmm. you're talking like a lady. <laughs> <laughs> I can pick your tone. I can pick the texture yeah. of what you're communicating. Yeah. So I will always say that the men of God are very crucial. Mm -hmm. the, the women of God are very crucial. Mm -hmm. So already start defining yeah. where you're heading to. Yes. And they might tell you, hold on, mm -hmm. please follow the voice of God mm -hmm. through the servants of God mm -hmm. because they, they, they might have also picked up some signals yes. which time will tell mm -hmm. you might be so much in the rush mm -hmm. and you know when mm -hmm. we're so hot mm -hmm. in that yes. phase mm -hmm. we want to jump into it but yeah. you know we have an African proverb which says you know what an old man sees sitting mm -hmm. down a young man cannot see standing, standing up, up. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 so you give, you give mm -hmm. time yes. and yes. wisdom to get into it and I believe sure. God will give you wisdom yeah. Yeah, yeah, if I, if I yes. just may add to what mm. uh, Dr. Julius has said, mm. you know, very powerful one. Thank you yeah. so much. Uh, I, I just want to say, you see, one, one problem that people, singles have, mm. is that they don't understand that the waiting period, mm. which they think is a wasting period, yeah. is actually mm. a time yeah. for them. He was talking about investing in yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When they should invest in mm -hmm. themselves, mm -hmm. You know, at times God can allow such a delay because first he wants you to get to know him. Wow. To be able to, to pick yes. out to hear yeah. his voice. Yeah. If you can know how to hear God, mm -hmm. you will be spared mm -hmm. from mistakes. So mm -hmm. God wants to train you as, okay, this is how to hear discernment. Mm -hmm. This is how to pick from the spirit. Mm -hmm. This is how to get this. Wow. This is how to know when you are wrong. This is how to know when you are right. right. I mean, he does the training. He yeah. does the teaching. Yeah. So That's a lot right. of people, instead of focusing on that, it's okay, let me build my capacity. Yes. Capacity to hear God. Mm -hmm. Capacity to make right decisions, mm -hmm. which God guides you. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's the more you allow yourself to be guided by God, mm -hmm. by the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. the more those things, you, what you have not been doing before is difficult. Somebody mm -hmm. who has not been hearing God before, somebody who has not been developing sure. himself yeah, before, you now you want to get married, yeah. you want to hear God overnight, yeah. <laughs> and you want to be able to know that this That's is God true. speaking, sure. it's not going to, be, it's yeah. not going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, you get to know my voice yeah. if I'm speaking, even if I'm speaking far away, yeah. you get to know this is mm -hmm. me speaking. Yeah. 
if you have been relating with me. Yes. Yes. But that's if you have not been relating with me, if yeah. I speak, you will count my voice for a stranger. Yeah. So that's why it's important. So the waiting period is a developing period. Yeah. It's a maturing period, just like he has said. Mm -hmm. You want to mature your spirit. You want, yeah. to, you want to grow with the Lord to be mm -hmm. able to say, oh, I know his voice. Mm -hmm. I can recognize his voice. So if you can recognize his voice, it will be hard for you mm -hmm. when God is now leading you in matters of marriage to say, okay, yes, I, I hear what God is saying. Yes. I can pick this. God, God is saying this. God is saying that. Yeah. So that's why you see some people just say, I don't know. I don't know how to hear God. So they just want to make a choice, you know, the Gideon kind of yeah, arrangement, flicks, you know, and just go by whatever is available. Based on what you just said, sir, um, that goes to my next question. And the question is, whose choice is it? Oh. When we, when you know, in choosing the, the life partner, mm. I, I tell you some funny story. <laughs> so when when I met my husband, I had heard from God, and you know you were there, <laughs> and, <laughs> and you know the other pastors. So I have a, a a mentor of mine from when I was single, Dr. Rita. So when I had already been in courtship with my husband. Mm. Um, and he was meeting Victor for the first time. Victor looked at me and said, you chose him. I was so offended. <laughs> like, what do you mean? I prayed to God about this and then I heard. <laughs> How can it now be my choice, you know? But it took me a while to actually realize why he pushed it back to me. To you, yeah. Because I believe that when you have made a choice, mm. there's a responsibility. Mm that accompanies that mm -hmm. and we don't like assuming that point of responsibility yeah. we like saying this man that you have chosen for me for me you yeah. know come mm. and fix him just like adam yeah. this is the yeah. woman that you have yeah. chosen for me yes yeah. so i'd like to ask from you sir because yeah. you you are, you are both talking to us about the importance of discernment and hearing the voice of yeah. god yeah. so if we're saying that it is we must hear from God so yeah. that we know that mm. this is the one, you know. And then I'm saying that Victor said you chose. Mm -hmm. Can you please try and bring the, the clarity there? Okay. Uh, you know, the difference between the two. All right. Does it mean that if I chose my husband myself, mm. there was no need for me to pray okay. and ask if he was the one, you know? Okay. Thank you very much. Um, the, the issue of making a choice in marriage and going to God to know what God, what God is saying is just like it for me. The Bible says there's a way that seemed good to a man, mm. said, but the end is destruction. Mm. Now, for us as human beings, we are limited. Mm. We are so, so limited. Mm. In fact, you can't see just like some people say beyond your nose. Yeah. You can't even, even say what will happen in the next one minute you or said. even one second. You, you can't said. do that. But he sees the end from the beginning. Yeah. He said. Are you getting me yes, now? Sir. Now, again, the other dimension to this is that if God is your father, mm -hmm. you want to get his approval. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So the issue mm -hmm. of seeking for God's way yes. and the talking to God about it mm -hmm. is actually to say, God, are you in this? Yes. Mm -hmm. are, are you getting what yes, I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. whatever the situation, remember again, God will never force anything on you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You have a part to play. Yes. God did not create robots. Mm. And God, you see, God respects, I, I so much, when I look at that, even as, as sovereign, as powerful as he is, he still, res, he still respects our opinion. Yeah. That's why you will read in, in places like Isaiah, where God will say to you, come and let's reason yeah. together. Who are you? Who is what's man? Yeah. And he said, come and let's re reason yeah. together. Yeah. Yeah. Are, are you getting what I'm Even when he created Adam and him, and he put them in the Garden of Eden, you know, he could just wire them in such a way that they should just do everything yeah. that will make him happy. Yeah, yeah. But yet, he gave them the power of yeah. choice. Mm -hmm. So, this choice is also there. This power of choice is there. Yes, and even when he brought Eve to Adam, mm. I mean, at the beginning, yes. he presented Eve. But do you know that there was this exercise of the power of choice? Because mm. Adam said, oh, wow, this is 
bone of my bone. That's that's a, a kind of a voice of saying this is my Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. God wants also wants you to come in. He wants you to express yourself. But however, because of the fact that I said we are limited, and because of the fact that most of us we do not grow at the same at the same level mm -hmm. that God or go to, go to, grow to the level that God wants us to grow, mm -hmm. he can if he sees like any other person we do. Any father who loves his children, mm. love his daughter or love his child will say to you, oh, I can sense danger here. Mm. I don't think this is right. Yeah. I don't think this is good. Then God can tell you, this is not good. Yeah. This will not work. Yeah. But again, he will not force you. That's true. Yes, sir. That's very you still have your choice too. Yes. You can say, okay, God, no, it's okay. I will live with whatever I see there. You just don't worry. You've told me, but it's okay. I'm going in right there. And you can go. So he's, he's still respecting your choice. Yeah. So you still have a contribution in that matter, no matter what. Yeah, wow. to say yes or to say no. <laughs> I think just to wrap it up, um, I think I'm speaking on behalf of all the single ladies out there. Yeah. Um, what are the Christian brothers out there looking for? <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Julius, <laughs> what are the brothers looking for? <laughs> Maybe the question... You know, it's, it's supposed to be, what was I looking for? <laughs> <laughs> I hope she, she definitely is following this broadcast. <laughs> definitely. The, the first thing which uh, uh, a godly man should mm. look out for mm. in a lady is, number one, that person should definitely have Christ. Mm. Number two, I'm sure you're waiting. <laughs> <laughs> number two, I believe that person should prove a sense of maturity yeah, yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. As I said, on the other hand, maybe he's a single boy even. The, the, the boy should definitely gravitate and start graduating into a man. Mm -hmm. If you see some sense of responsibility at home, mm -hmm. you should not be daddy's boy, always on the couch, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. playing games. Mm -hmm. We should see a sense of maturity. Yeah. Likewise with a lady. Mm -hmm. We should see a sense of maturity. Mm -hmm. You can't allow mommy to be cooking in the kitchen alone. Mm -hmm. We would have monitored your space, you know, as we do in Africa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The aunties will come around and they will know wow. if you're helping by the kitchen already. Mm -hmm. We're picking up the signals. So are you helping by the kitchen? Are you polite enough? So we start seeing your character traits, which adds value, which adds some credits mm -hmm. on our list, you know, to start taking the boxes <laughs> and getting there. But I believe as, as it goes, maybe somebody's asking me the question, but Pastor, don't be so spiritual. <laughs> they not external features. <laughs> <laughs> we, are, we are human also. Mm. You know, we, we definitely have the proclivity mm. to also have a very subjective admiration. Mm. Everybody has, mm. you know, their own admiration, yeah. which is subjective. Exactly. And again, as Pastor said, God will lead you. One good thing is that God is the one who gives us the approval. Mm. And God gives us also the leeway. Mm. Uh, you know, a verse came our way when he was answering that question, 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself approved mm. unto God. Mm. Sometimes we just jump into a Hollywood marriage mm. where we call these guys to come and sign for us. Mm. Tomorrow you are in, tomorrow you are mm. So we must understand mm. that there is time for you to mature. Mm. We get to know the person. Mm. Yeah. Okay, okay, speaking of maturity, Dr. <laughs> Julius, I think I will take you on, on that if, if I will say. Now, what people look for depends on their maturity. Mm. Mm. Now, let me tell you that. Mm. If you are, have you ever observed when you take a child to the mall mm. and you are in the mall, it doesn't matter what's in the mall. The child wants a candy. Mm. <laughs> and he can be crying. Mm. She can be crying for candy. Mm. And uh, until you get the sweet or you get something for it. But by the time you are growing, I, I mean, I, I, I remember my boy when, mm. when he was very, very small. Mm. We would go into the mall. He will be asking me, buy me this toy. Yeah. He, he wants a particular toy, toy. car. Then I observed as he was growing, we got, we'll get him into the, into, the, into the mall. He's going to leave us behind. He wants to go and jump. Are you getting me now in the jumping costume? No longer interested in that. After a time again, he began to show interest 
in games. Mm -hmm. Are you getting me now? After a time, again, then the issue will be, oh, I've got this assignment, I want this test book, I want this extra book, I want this extra thing. Now, your value yeah. is also a function of your maturity. Mm -hmm. Now, what people look for also, just like Dr. Judah said about maturity, is also defined by the level they are in. Somebody can just be looking at, oh, all I'm looking for is that, okay, I want this man that is dark, tall, and okay. handsome <laughs> with a, BM, a BMW black series. Mm -hmm. That's all. Just say, give me that, then I'm fine. <laughs> but, well, when you get that, yeah. you will not be fine. <laughs> now, as somebody else who has also grown yeah. in the Lord, who's okay, no, beyond that, I'm, I'm looking for somebody who fear God. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for somebody who love God, which of course should be the basis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But for somebody who is a baby, that may not mean anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, besides that again, you may want to grow again and you are, you are looking at somebody who say, okay, give me somebody with a purpose. Give me somebody who has found a purpose, who has a vision. I'm not just going for anybody because I have a vision. I have something to do. Then I want somebody that Together, we can complement one another, you know, uh, 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 carry out the assignment mm. that God asked for us. Mm. So this thing, again, is, is on the level yeah. where you are in. Yeah. So and it's also subjective, you know, individualistic thing comes in, into it again and say, okay, this is what I'm looking for, this is what I'm looking for. So you cannot have this tailor-made general thing yeah. for people. But however, one other thing that I can add is that, okay, every man wants an intelligent woman. Yes, I will say that to you. <laughs> and, <laughs> okay. and I always say to people that, you know, uh, beauty, beauty can gain uh, attraction, but it takes wisdom to keep a marriage. Yeah. It takes yeah. wisdom. Yeah. So, you know, somebody can just get, look at you for the first day, get lost at you and say, oh, this has a good shape. Yeah, she has a good size, a good thing, and they, you know, carried away. But you get in there, when your intelligence comes at, to, at to play, and they are not there, then there's going to be a problem. Mm. So we also want to talk, that's not to, that's not to underrate the, the importance of beauty. Yeah. Beauty is fine, but again, we're looking for virtue here. Yeah. Virtue, I mean, we're talking about Christian marriage now. Yeah. So virtue comes in. So if, if I'm looking for, I'm looking for somebody who is virtuous. Yeah. I'm looking for somebody who imbibes the principles of God, who not just, not just only have been made theoretically, is a practicing Christian. Mm. Are you getting me now? Okay, we are looking for somebody who is also caring. We are looking for somebody who will want to, I mean, you, you, look, at, you look at the time that um, Isaac was to get uh, married, you have to get somebody for him. And the, by the time the person came, that was in the, in the person of Rebecca, mm -hmm. the Bible says, and Isaac took Rebecca in, that's Genesis chapter 24, I think it's verse 63 if I'm not mistaken, and he, he was comforted because at that time he had lost the mom. So what he was looking for was somebody who would stand in the shoe of the mother. And I don't know whether you understand. And he really got that in Rebecca. So things that people look for are different and depends on where they are. But again, look for things that are scriptural, you know, put them, prioritize them, yeah, yeah. just want to prioritize spiritual things. Sure, such pearls of wisdom <laughs> and time really flies when you're having fun and yeah. 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 Thank you so much, uh, Pastor and Dr. Pleasure. for such a quality time that you just had with you. Yes. And to you viewers at home, thank you for joining us. We hope that this was a blessing to you as it was to us. Yes, it was. <laughs> Have fun and bye. See you soon. See you soon. Bye. <laughs> Bye.